Guru Nation, thank you so much for joining me late at night to talk stocks. I'm talking Q Biopharma, and this is a oncology company, immunotherapy company. There's a, I tell you guys, there's a lot of stuff in the immunotherapy space. My CRO actually does one investigator initiated trial right now that is in immunotherapy. It's a very exciting area of research. This T cells, right? T cells are something we're finding like a lo- learning a lot about this next decade, uh, but so much left to be learned. So for example, there's the T cells that fight, then there's the T cells that regulate, there's checkpoint inhibitors within the T cell to keep them from turning off because T cells, the ones that fight typically only fight for a short period of time. And then the T cell regulators basically start a cascade of events to stop the attack. Right. So this is the whole thing of checkpoint inhibitor. Well, Q Biopharmaceuticals, we actually wrote about this on Latinos in Clinical Research. Q Biopharmaceuticals is a $409 million stock, $409 million market cap stock. And we wrote about it here on Latinos in Clinical Research. Let me go through this really quick. Then I'm going to go through their corporate presentation. And then I'm going to give, so I want to give disclaimer. I'm not, I have no investment in Q Biopharma. I'm not even sure if I will. Right now, the entire market as of October 4th, 2021, it's not looking good. Okay. And the first, like with worries about inflation and the debt ceiling, the first thing that companies, the first thing that gets affected are tech companies and biotech certainly in that. However, this one has some promise. and. Again, I'm not invested. I'm not, this is not financial advice, but let's look at the uh, one year chart. So you can see that if we look at the five year chart, it was at $27, but this is probably before a whole bunch of splits. So Q uh, right now is trading at symbol CUE, trading at about $13 even. And in the last year, it looks like the range was like 16. The low in the last year was 10. So it's right in the middle of where it's been trading, which I think it's going to still could get, continue to go lower in the short term. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about the long-term aspects of this company. Because when you invest in these biotechs, I mean, yeah, you can trade them. That's not my style. I'm interested in the technology and the science. So targeting T-cells, Q. The, the medical officer said on one of their videos, only 15 to 20% of immunotherapy patients actually respond and live longer on immunotherapy. Why? Because they're, they're targeting all T cells and not just the T cells specific for fighting the cancer tumors. So this is what Q, Q gets his name from using the body's cues to figure out um, how to how to target these T cells? How to modulate and then ha- direct the T cells? It, we're gonna get into the investor presentation really quick, but uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts based Q Q Biofarm, a clinical stage, so they're in phase one, uh, engineering a novel class of injectable biologics to selectively engage and modulate targeted T cells directly within the body. Received two new U.S. patents. Um, the company's IP portfolio includes about 300 pending applications and issued patents that are either owned by Q Biopharma or exclusively licensed from the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. So U.S. patent number 11, uh, whatever, covers Q Biopharma's first clinical drug candidate, Q101, and its use in treating HPV-16 associated cancers such as head and neck, cervical and genital anal cancers. CE101 is currently in a phase 1B trial in which second line and beyond patients are receiving Q101 as monotherapy for HPV16 positive recurrent metastatic head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. Currently Q101 has demonstrated monotherapy clinical activity by selective activation of targeted CD8 positive T cells specific for HPV plus cancer cells 
with a 40% clinical benefit in the first 10 available patients at the recommended phase two dose. Uh, Q101 is also in a dose escalation study in combination with pembrolizumab in frontline patients with HPV-16 positive recurrent metastatic. A phase two exploratory clinical trial uh, will be administered in the neoadjuvant phase before standard of care therapy and treatment naive uh, HLA positive patients with locally advanced HPV positive orof- oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma. It's a head and neck cancer. Um, U.S. patent number, the other patent, covers the use of Q101 in combination with Keytruda for treating HPV 16 associated cancers such as head and neck, cervical and genital anal cancer. So the combination of Q101 and Keytruda is being evaluated. This is immunotherapy. You activate the T cells, then you give the therapy. Uh, According to Daniel Passeri, CEO of Q Biopharma, the issuance of these patents represents an important development as well as we continue to build our IP portfolio and bolster patent protection for novel protein engineering platforms we have enabled, particularly as we begin demonstrating clinical activity and what we believe will be a disruptive and transformational breakthrough in immunotherapy for addressing cancer and other debilitating life-threatening illnesses, uh, diseases. Furthermore, obtaining these patents early in the development of Q101 enhances our ability to receive a patent term extension from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. If Q101 is approved by the FDA, we continue to make a substantial investment in protecting our intellectual property. So Q Biopharma is working on immunotherapy that has the potential to offer patients therapeutic advantages while minimizing or eliminating side effects. That's another issue with immunotherapy is the side effects because those T cells that get activated, they go to, they start attacking healthy cells too. That's the problem with immunotherapy, traditional immunotherapy. So this is trying to minimize or eliminate those side effects. The company's vision is to transform medicine by realizing the promise of safe and highly effective immunotherapy through the development of its, what it calls immunostat and Neostat Biologics Platform, engineered to overcome the current challenges faced by prevailing immunotherapeutics. Q's biologics are designed to selectively engage and modulate disease-relevant T-cells by emulating nature's own cues or signals, I told you that's the name, to regulate the immune system. These biologics are administered directly in the patient's body. Um, In September 2019, they began the dose escalation and expansion trial the company started the uh, dose escalation and expansion phase one clinical trial in combination with Keytruda. Q engaged a network of nationally recognized clinical investigators at 14 sites. Q, so then they get into the business. There could be some stock issuance coming up. There was a report that they just filed a perspective suggesting it plans to soon issue some more securities. So this is how biotechs typically raise more money, is issue more securities, sell more securities, so common stock. And what that means is, you know, it could potentially dilute the price. I mean, they need the money somehow. And this is what, this is one of the things early stage biotech, this remember very early stage biotech. So let's go to the, this is the company Q's, Q Biopharma's investor deck. So this is what we discussed. How do we make immunotherapy more effective? Increasing and activating tumor-targeted T cells is key to enhancing therapeutic benefit. Interleukin-2 was the first cytokine to be successfully used in the treatment of cancer because it promotes expansion, function, and survival of effector T cells. Those are the ones that fight. IL, not the regulatory T cells. Those are the ones that turn it off. IL-2 was approved for therapy of metastatic melanoma and metastatic renal cell carcinoma. Overall response rates have remained low due to narrow therapeutic window and poor tolerability. The major challenge in development of interleukin-2 as a therapeutic anti-tumor agent is that it acts indiscriminately on both cytotoxic T cells and T regulatory cells, leading to severe toxicity. IL interleukin-2 therapy challenges, non-selective T cell activation, Poor tolerability, extremely narrow therapeutic window. Vast majority of T cells are not tumor specific. 
need for interleukin-2 selectivity for tumor-specific T cells, activation of Tregs, which turn off the, the, the T cells that fight. Uh, a superior therapeutic strategy would selectively and specifically modulate only the disease-relevant T cells while preserving patient safety and restoring therapeutic capacity of patient's immune system. So this is like taking immunotherapy up another level. You know how in video games you can level up if it's a role-playing game, you just keep fighting, leveling up. This is leveling up. And this is the core foundational principle that underscores our approach with the Immunostat Biologics platform. I wish we had Dr. Al on the show. Maybe we'll cover this on the Clinical Research Circle. Everybody go subscribe to that channel too. Designing an interleukin-2 variant in the context of T-cell receptor engagement. This is kind of like the science behind that. You can see the presentation on their website. Um, directing IL-2 activity to tumor-specific T-cells and avoiding serious off-target side effects. So again, if you focus the activity on tumor-specific T-cells, biased activation and expansion of tumor-specific T-cells or TCR-engaged T-cells. Advantages are selective activity of interleukin-2 on tumor-specific T-cells, potential for activation of TCR-engaged anti-tumor T-cell, demonstrated expansion of NK cells, minimized Treg activation, generally well-tolerated to date. Opportunity to maximize fullest potential of interleukin-2. Uh, lead candidate designed to selectively prime and expand HPV, human papilloma virus. It's a growing driver of head and neck cancer in the U.S. Despite treatment with current standards of care, more than 50% of patients with advanced disease will experience recurrence. The HPV 16E7 protein is primary driver of tumor tumorigenesis, and the E7 peptide presented by Q101 is a highly conserved T cell epitope and is immunogenic. The Q101 clinical development strategy builds upon robust translational preclinical data and patient stratification. That's the lead asset uh, from the, based on the Q100 series. And those are the studies we mentioned earlier. These are the phase one part B clinical observations, objective response, complete response or partial response confirmed greater than or equal to four weeks, one, 10%. Durable stable disease, three, 30%. Clinical benefit rate is four, 40%. Remember, 20% benefit, 15 to 20% benefit in regular immunotherapy. Um, confirmed partial response with around 65% reduction in target lesions, tumor necrosis, and T cell infiltrates in target lesions. Um, potential for multiple registration paths. So monotherapy, which would be the second line plus therapy for HPV and neck cancer, combination therapy, which is first line treatment, HPV and head and neck cancer in combination with Keytruda, and then neoadjuvant therapy. So early treatment and neoadjuvant setting. These are the ones where it gets really interesting in the neoadjuvant to demonstrate the value of Q101. And then they have Q102, Wilms Tumor 1, IND on track for first quarter 2022 filing. Oncofetal tumor antigen with restricted t uh, tissue. WT1 is expressed in over 20 types of hematological malignancies and solid tumors, offering broad clinical opportunities. This company has a lot of stuff in the pipeline. Q103 CRAS builds on NCI studies that demonstrated clinical response using mutated CRAS specific T cells. Um, CRAS, yeah, so the, you can get into like, you can geek out on this stuff. And I, that's something I want you guys to do. I'm actually learning about this stuff myself. Um, not an expert. This is why we need Dr. Al. This is why the clinical research circle is so cool. Uh, expansion of modular CUEQ100 series into broad range of cancer. So you got head and neck, cervical, other solids such as ovarian, pancreatic, breast, um, hematologic lung with the CRAS is the lung. Um, WT1 is the breast cancer solid. And then um, 101 is the head and HPV with the head and neck cancers. Uh, so the first one is the HPV with the head and neck, HPV positive head and neck. Summary of strategic development. They want the 101 monotherapy data. Monotherapy holds promise of registration, clinical data risks, uh, clinical data de-risks Q101 as well as Q100. 
Then they have Q102 targets Will Wilms tumor one WT1 driven cancers IND filing quarter one 2022, and then Q103 IND projected for 2023. And that is their presentation. That's a little bit of the science behind it. Again, very early, but if it uh, if it does what it says, and it's a fast improvement on top of traditional immunotherapy, which is basically all the rage right now, there's something here, right? And it's still very early. So again, not financial advice. I'm not an owner of this stock. I am interested in it. I'm interested enough to want to do a clinical research circle roundtable with Dr. Al on this. So stay tuned. Let me know what you think. Do your own homework. This is exciting, interesting stuff. Geek out on it a little bit. And tell me in the comments what you think. Bye-bye.